Welcome, this is D.L. Hughes from VelocityWriting.com, where you learn to write with speed, passion, purpose, and profitability. In this video, I want to outline the steps authors need to take to sell their book to a traditional or mainline publisher. There's a lot of emphasis on self-publishing these days, but there is a lively traditional publishing industry, and this video will help you access it. Now, first, before I get into the steps, I need to identify the players in today's publishing industry. Self-publishing is all the rage now. That means that you write the book, edit it, format it, publish it, and promote it under your own name. Some self-publishers contract out copy editing and formatting tasks like cover and interior design and file creation, but they do all that themselves under their own name. That is the purest form of self-publishing. Now, at the other end of the scale is traditional or mainline or mainstream publishing. <laughs> Those terms are all interchangeable. Sometimes these established companies are called royalty publishers. They buy the rights to publish your book. Now, once you sign a contract with them, they pay you. <laughs> it varies, but they pay in advance, usually a small one, and a royalty over time, which is generally about 15% of the net selling price of your book. Your publisher then handles advanced editing and all aspects of book production and distribution. You pay nothing. Now, there are variations of these two basic forms of publishing, self and tradition, which I'm going to mention later. But right now, let me mention one of the most insidious forms of publishing out there. They are wolves in sheep's clothing, in my opinion. I call them the new vanity press. Now, these people are like the old time vanity press in that they sell services not books. They want you to pay through the nose to publish under their brand name and pay far bigger fees than if you contracted them out separately as a self-publisher. Plus, you have the stigma of their brand. Bookstore and library buyers know these are vanity publishing companies and they're reluctant to buy from them. Sure, the new vanity press companies maintain online bookstores, but once you pay them outrageous prices to produce your book, <laughs> they don't care if it sells or not. They've already made their profit. By the way, some of these uh, new vanity press companies are divisions of well-known publishers. To me, that makes the situation far worse. Some of these pay to publish companies include the ones that I've listed here. Now, I believe these companies do such a disservice to the publishing community that I wrote a book several years ago and update annually about the perils of dealing with these companies. No matter how you publish your book, you'll gain knowledge and save money by reading it. It's available in both ebook and print editions. In this video, we're talking about traditional publishers. So here's how to go about getting a traditional publisher. As I said, traditional publishers fall into two categories. There is the big five. That's all that's left now of the hundreds of well-known publishers that once existed. These companies gobbled up all the other major publishing companies. Why do you see the names of some of the old publishing company names on books? Well, it's because uh, the conglomerates kept the old familiar names as brands of their larger companies. They call them imprints 
And here are a few of the well-known ones from just one big five company. You know, it's kind of like cars. In the old days, companies like Buick, Cadillac, uh, Chevrolet, Pontiac, and Oldsmobile uh, were all independent car companies, but they were bought up by a conglomerate called General Motors. Not all the car brands I mentioned still exist, but General Motors owns them all. So, as you begin the journey to place your book with a traditional publisher, you need to go to the publisher websites and see what brands or imprints they use. You may think that you're sending your book to a different company, but they are likely just different divisions of the same company. The second category of traditional publishers is called the small press. They are sometimes called indie publishers, but the new vanity press sometimes calls themselves indie publishers to confuse new authors. But the small press is distinct. The small press publishers are royalty publishers like the big five. When they agree to publish your book, they will pay you in advance and royalties. You can tell they are genuine because they will not ask you to pay one penny for anything. They handle everything themselves at their own expense. They're called the small press because they have annual sales of less than $50 million a year, not because they lack publishing clout. Small press publishers are unique because they often just publish books that deal with a particular topic, or they might publish books on a wider range of topics, but dedicated to one geographic region. For example, there are small press publishers that only deal with cowboy lore. Then there are those who will publish books on any topic that deal with the people and events in a region like the American South, for example. There are many small presses that serve what we call narrow vertical markets of different kinds, and they're great. You may get personalized attention and better sales with them than you would one of the big five publishers and their many imprints. For books in specialized markets, publisher size does not matter. It's their dedication in publishing and promoting your book that makes the difference. Now, let me remind you that the new Vanity Press has clouded the terminology to confuse new authors into buying their overpriced services. That includes the terms small press and independent or indie press. Just keep this in mind. A legitimate small press will never ask you to pay for anything. They are traditional publishers and they pay you. So how do you get a traditional publisher to accept your manuscript? Well, today almost all traditional publishers require that you submit your book through a literary agent. You should check publisher websites to verify they publish books in your genre and their preferred way of receiving manuscripts. The Big Five don't want the legal, personnel, or logistical problems associated with receiving thousands of unsolicited manuscripts. They want you to find an agent who will read your manuscript and determine if it has merit. Publishers trust seasoned literary agents. If the independent agent signs you, they will try to sell your manuscript to the appropriate publisher. Agents are generally insiders who have lots of valuable skills, including personal relationships with acquisition editors at various publishing houses, so they really earn their money. And yes, agents will charge you up to 15% or more of every dollar of income your book receives forever. If your agent sells your book, you'll get an advance, usually a small one, and periodic royalty payments. You pay nothing to publishers. Publishers pay you. 
Now, don't pay an agent a reading fee or any other administrative costs. The best agents make plenty of money from their commissions and they don't need to profit by selling you other services. One of the nice things about the small press is that most of them do not require you to have an agent. Check their website for details, but if your book is in the specific area of interest to them, they'll gladly look at your manuscript without fanfare. If they don't want to publish it, you're likely to get a nice letter back with suggestions for improvement. The small press usually likes to encourage uh, new authors particularly. Now, if they do like it and want to publish it, they'll send you a contract to sign. If you get a contract, you probably want to take it to an intellectual property attorney for a review. No, not your family attorney, not a real estate attorney, or anyone like that. You want to do a Google search for an intellectual property attorney in your area. Let them tell you the positives and the negatives about the contract uh, that any you know particular publisher wants you to sign. Now, if you have an agent, it's in their best interest that you get a good deal. They understand intellectual property law, but you probably should still uh, seek an intellectual property attorney if you doubt what your agent says. How do you go about preparing your manuscript and getting an agent? In either case, you want to submit your final revised and edited manuscript. Agents and publishers will reject a sloppy manuscript no matter how good the book may be. Once your book has been accepted by an agent, he or she may ask you to rewrite certain portions of your book. Do it! Once accepted by a publisher, the publisher will likely re-edit your book. Hey, that's fine. Your job is to present the best version of your book, and that would include professional copy editing before you submit it to anyone. Always go to the website of an agent or publishing company and see how they prefer to receive manuscripts. Follow their instructions to the letter. Don't try to wing it when it comes to submitting a manuscript. And then finally, be patient. <laughs> Normally it takes about 180 days for your book to appear in bookstores after you sign a publisher contract. Where is the best place to find agents, traditional publishers, and legitimate small press publishers? Well, search Amazon for Literary Marketplace and you'll see a series of books published by Writer's Digest Books. Also, you may be able to find them in your local library. Have a great writing day. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helps you on your writing journey, no matter what kind of writing you're doing. For bonus goodies, check out the description for this video on YouTube. Get great information by subscribing to my channel. Also, click on the bell to get notifications. I'll see you soon.